You're saying that in Islam, the poor, don't the poor Muslims don't, they don't, do don't, don't only have to keep four pillars, not five. They don't do hajj either. If they don't have the money to do hajj, they don't do hajj. Great, okay. So Islam can be reduced to three pillars. Yes. How much is 2.5%? For a Christian, it can, can, can be one penny and that's the charity done for the And if they're dirt poor, that's totally and fine. You know, you know How can a poor person you know, give 2.5%? So you're saying Muslims, the Muslims the never invaded other people's lands? Let me finish and you're going to get the idea. Never. Let me get the idea. <laughs> Your religion reduces Allah to a fetishist. Someone who obsesses about the form and the ritual. That is a fetishist. That is the definition of a fetishist. To worship God continuously. In Islam, you pray five times a day, and there are times in the day when you're not even permitted to pray. Well, it's subjective. Well, it depends it's subjective. On the, well, there you go. Depending on the methodology you follow. In Islam, but we, Islamically, between the morning the same, prayer and the afternoon prayer, you're prohibited from praying. Yeah, when the, the sun is directly above your head. Nice to meet you, bro. God nice bless. So, so here's the thing. If you're, but if, the same way in Islam, if you do anything for the sake of God, that is also counted as worship. You're, you're said if you remember God. No, no, no. You're, it, you're, the, so, for example, eating in yep. the name of God. Yeah. Saying. In the name of God, yep. I eat this meal, yep. this is to provide me with sustenance so I can pray and whatnot. This is also an act of worship. That's what we believe. Right, so theologically there's a profound difference between Islam and Christianity in worship. Where's the difference? In Islam, worship is the remembrance of God. As well as physical worship. That, that which is the remembrance of God. All that you're doing is remembering God. Yes. Right. That is radically different from what Christians see as worship. Worship is literally to offer sacrifice. We offer sacrifice as well. Muslims don't offer any sacrifice. And we sacrifice things that we like to do to pray. So, so when you, you when you slit the throat of that animal, yeah. what 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 is that sacrifice doing? No. Well, it's the very fact that God instructed Abraham to do it. Yep. And we are doing it for the sake of God. So it's remembrance. But it's also a sacrifice. So it's not a sacrifice. We do sacrifice our time because yeah. sometimes you have to wake up early in the morning. Yeah. Even when it's cold and going and making ablution and performing the prayer, that's a sacrifice for us because it's not easy to get that early. Yeah, 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 I agree. I mean, we Christians, those of us, those of us that are, are very disciplined wake up at three in the morning to pray and then six at morning and pray. Yeah, we, it's called the office, office of the hours. I, I, am, I am not that good. I am not that good. But, but our monks, our monks, they will pray every three hours throughout the entire day. Every three hours they pray. So I agree with you. That is a, a, a well, let me let, 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 let me let me finish. No, no, one one finish. Because I understood what you said. Let, I understood what brother. I understood what you said. I understood what you said. Right. But but none of this none of this is sacrifice in your religion. You don't have a con. Show me in the Quran. One second. One second. The the Quran does not have a concept that you are sacrificing in worship. The Quran has a concept that you are remembering God in worship. You sacrifice the animal Eid because Allah told you to do so. So it's about remembrance of His commands so and obedience. Say, what are you right. Our we are worshiping God by doing but that. You, you, you that is an act of worship. But it's not an it, the, the act of the act of worship in Islam strictly is the act of remembrance. Okay, so how is, not, how please is, be with you, brother, sister. So I'm going to have to correct you that that's not correct. I think you've okay. got to Is there is there is there, is there, a, is there a concept explain? of priesthood in Islam? A priesthood. What's that? A priesthood. Well, we imams and they're, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Well, they're not priests. Yeah, they're not priests. Yeah, they're not priests. So yeah, you have no. By definition, they're not priests. They're not. By definition, they're not, definition, they're not priests, and by definition, therefore, they can't sacrifice. Why is that? Priests. The, the, the very because and this is the point. This is why we know that Islam isn't in the line of Moses. It isn't in the line of David or any of the Old Testament prophets. What about Abraham? No, nor Abraham as well, because did Abraham sacrifice? He off, he sacrificed an animal. That's sacrifice. Yes. So when we sacrifice, what do we do? But you're you're doing it out of remembrance of Allah's command. So when you sacrifice, how do you? Why is it not remembrance? Right. So the the reason why it's sacrifice is because for us the act of worship is the wholeness of the being, the fullness of the being. It's not a particular act. In Islam, How is that? shall we move under the? Shall we move closer just to get out of the rain? 
So, in Islam, the act of worship is a particular act. It's the salat, it's the wudu, it's the animal that you give at Eid, mm -hmm. it's your zakat. So worship for you are particular ritualistic forms, they're acts. But in definition, they are also sacrifices. I agree at a human level. Your money, your time, yeah. your hunger. Yeah. Going to have a pilgrimage, desire everything. Every day, yeah. sacrifice for it. Yeah. I, 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 I want him to explain. That is, that is classed as a daily sacrifice. Do you agree? Yeah, I want him to I, explain what his form of sacrifice is. I agree that it is, all of these things that you're talking about are sacrifices. They are all acts of worship and you get rewarded right. for that. So show me in the Quran. Where, where you are commanded to sacrifice. Well, it's a struggle against your, your, your desires. Jihad, okay, I get struggle. Yeah. But where does it tell you to, that, that sacrifice is the act of worship? It doesn't teach you that in the Quran. It, does, it doesn't. It, talks about the it, teaches, yourself, it teaches you to... You'll get rewarded for it in the end. It teaches you to follow Allah's commands. And I agree, I agree that at a human level, following Allah's commands can be described objectively as a sacrifice, I'm not. I'm not. Don't. So don't. It's a sacrifice. No, not to God. Let me explain. So it's a sacrifice. No, you. <laughs> you're not following. You're not following the chain of the conversation. I, I agree. Semantics. No, no. It, but it, there is a fundamental difference because you are told that the act of worship is the remembrance of Allah's commands. Yes. Right. And I agree that at a human level, Allah commands you to do things we that can be described. To remember. Right, no, you re you sacrifice because you remember. No, we sacrifice to remember. But a priest, a priest of the... It's more submission than remembrance. Ex submission is the word. Sorry. That's going to struggle. Okay. So, so a, a priest offers a sacrifice. In what way? Right, so a great way. A sacrifice is of your life. It has to be of your life. Okay. It has to be of life. Does he kill himself? Exactly, great question. So in scripture, we're called to die to ourselves. Okay. In the Christian faith, we're literally called to die to ourselves. So are they in a vegetative state? In, or are in, they in, in, in baptism, practicing? in baptism, in baptism, we, we, we die to our old self and we put on Christ. Okay. So we put to death the inner man, is the Christian way of describing, so that we can... I don't see how... So that we can offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice Just to the Lord. Just as you offer your body oh, and your soul, we also offer our body and our soul and our desires for the same reason. You're just saying, because one's a priest, he can sacrifice, and because you're not a priest, you can't sacrifice. How can a priest, how could someone who is not a priest sacrifice? The word sacrifice isn't limited to priest. What is a priest? Well, you tell me. I'm someone saying, who offers a sacrifice. Saying, so are you a priest? I'm saying the definition of a you sacrifice. You have to be a priest to offer sacrifice. Sacrifice by definition is not limited to priests. You know you believe in Christianity? Uh, we believe that... Oh, flipping egg. Hold on. Let me stand with my back to the rain. With us, it's not limited to certain people or certain demographics. It's everyone. So, so I... I in, uh, this is, and this is the thing that I, I would say to you guys. That, that you need to go away and study Islam a little bit more. <laughs> you do. Because, because the act of worship in Islam is particular to the obedience of the Sharia. Right. It's particular, it's particular to the rituals. No, no, these, these, these sacrifice to your desires is what permits you to perform the Salat. When you deny yourself sleep, it's what permits you to perform the Salat. But the Salat is the act of worship. I'm not trying to distort your religion. I'm trying to be fair to your religion. I'm trying to explain to you how your religion is different from mine. I think you have a different understanding of my religion than I do. Yeah. I, I think Friend, I do. When we sacrifice our body yep. by not getting sleep to pray, which is what we do, how is how is that different to a priest who sacrifices his body for Christ? Right. So the difference is that the, the, the Christian gives everything in his life we, we as an act of worship to God. Same. You are actually told in Islam not to pray at certain times. Yeah, but that's is that true? In, in some, uh, From morning to the noon prayer, you're forbidden to pray. Is in, that not correct? In, in, yeah. Thank you. No, it's, it's in some uh, methodologies, kind of a fake. They don't. And that's that's Sunni Islam. Yeah. So, and I'm guessing you guys are Sunni. But it's, but yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Saying you're not allowed to have intercourse when you're fasting. Where intercourse is a form of, well, it's an ibadah. It's uh, when you do it in God's name, it's a form of worship as well. 
So you can't say because when you're fasting, you can't have intercourse, therefore you're being restricted on worship. So, so, so no, I, I agree if you're offering your soul and body to be a living sacrifice to the Lord. So what you're telling me is that, that you, want, you want what we've got in our scriptures. Our scriptures command us to offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice to the Lord. So, so now show me, please, can you show me in the Quran Yes. Where you're commanded to offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice to the Lord. Okay, so before you before we get onto that, I just want to make one clarification. If God tells you, hypothetically, yeah. to not pray in certain hours, yeah. and you don't pray in those certain hours, yeah. that is the sacrifice that you're doing. I don't believe a God would ever tell you not to pray. Well, well, Think so about God it. Says don't what, what is, do, why did God create us? He created us to glorify Him, correct? Yes. Right. God gives rules and regulations as to how to worship Him. So the same way I can't make an idol of God and it, worship. Listen him. to what you just said. God gives rules on how we are to worship Him. Yes, of course. So He's giving you a rule not to pray to Him. No. Yes. The, look, listen. Who commands you not to pray from morning till noon? This is this is the difference between Islam and Christianity, where you guys you <laughs> pray however you desire. Some people may pray like this, some people may get down on their face. We have a strict way of how to pray. Yep. And that was revealed by God. Which is not like Muhammad. Jesus prayed, by the way. You know that Jesus looked up to heaven when he prayed. But he also put his face on the ground. Just like Christians do. But Christians, Why when we pray, yes, we do. Today? I do, I do, I do. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he prostrates. Are you a Christian? Do you prostrate? Are you a Christian? Do you prostrate? Yeah. There you go. How Four often Christians. How often do I pray? Yeah. Not five times a day. How I pray often? unceasingly. How, and whatever, how many, how many times, whenever I want. How many times do you pray? Five, seven times a day. How many times do you pray? I try to pray seven times a day. How many times do you pray? I, just, I pray whenever it takes me. No, no, no. I try to pray seven times a day, but I'm just not good enough to get up at three in the morning. Pray all the time. It's a continuous conversation with God. There's no, there's no, there's no regulation. One, one person can pray once every ten days. And, and then because no, 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 a, a Christian would is encouraged to pray continuously. We're, 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 we're pray, we're encouraged as Christians to have a, a continuous dialogue with the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Muslims can do that as well. No, Muslims cannot do that with the Lord. In Islam, you are forbidden to pray from morning till noon. Is making du'a a form of worship? Is making du'a, tell us what du'a is. That's offering an intention, isn't it? Making a du'a is just saying a prayer. Right. It's just saying a prayer. You can you do that between noon and yes, morning? Yes, you can't. You can only not pray your duhr prayer yeah. during that time. So you're saying me that those in, Muslims... In, in Hanafi fiqh. So in Hanafi fiqh, yes. so, so who, which one gets it from Muhammad? The Hanafis or the others? It's, it's, it's a lot, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to say, I'm not educated in this But, but just think enough. about what you've just but, said. No, 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 listen. Think about the problem of what you've just said. You, you believe that Islam comes from Muhammad, and yet in one school of Islam, it says that you can pray from morning, you can't pray from morning till noon, Hanafi fiqh. But then in the others, they say that you can. Now, how can both Hanafi of these? The only, how Hanafi can? Is the only how, so, that are you I saying know. that Hanafis are wrong? No, no, no. It could be that all four. Of the, Hanafi is the only one that I know that say this. So, the point Regardless, is, I'm not, I'm not going to go into fiqh because I'm but, not. But, but the point is, you've However, got a school want, of Islam no, that's listen, saying don't pray, you, no, you said, and others that say do, no, 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 and they're both the claiming to represent Muhammad's the teaching. Sa the same way. That's a problem. The same way, God says you cannot pray directly after you've had intercourse unless you bathe yourself. You would say that's restricting worship. We would say God gives guidelines as to when and how to pray and yep. we follow them. I was going on to say dua, making a dua yep. is an invocation, yep. it's a prayer, yep. and you are you you are encouraged to do that throughout the whole day. Yep. So just as you Christians supposedly Can pray you, the whole so day. So say say you've had intercourse with your wife. No. Yeah, it's yep. all legit. Yep. You've had intercourse with your wife. Can you make dua from the moment yes, you can. wait? Wait, let me finish. Can you make dua between yes. between yes. The, the sex and the ablution? Yes. Right. So ablution is not necessary to dua, is it? What do you mean? So ablution is not necessary to I'm prayer. I'm saying in the direct prayer where we're so is is no salah, a dua is a prayer. No, it's a form of worship. So it's du so dua is not no, prayer. No, it's it's where we're, 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 no, he's confusing. He's been no, confused. A dua is an invocation. An inv is it a prayer? Why? Well, well, there's, there's two there's two prayers. One is a prayer that you say to God, and the other is the actual prayer. So is it a, is dua a prayer? Yes or no? <laughs> I'm asking you, is dua a prayer? Yes. Prayer. You, 
Is it a prayer? It's, no, a, di it's a difference in God. Or something. So it is a it, so it is a prayer. No, it's not. What so it is in a prayer. We have it's to an actual form. It's, it's, a, it's an act. So so two, two, so 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 hold on, hold on, so hold on. So so apparently, according to these guys, if you ask God for something, that isn't a prayer. That's oh. news to me. Okay. Anyone? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what prayer means? You know this is semantic. Shall I help you? You know this is. Shall I? Shall I? But I'm pointing out to you that you've got problems in your concept of prayer. You want salah and dua. So 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 let a prayer a prayer means supplication. That's what prayer means in English. It means supplication. It means to make a request. Yes. That's all it means. So if you ask God for something, you've made a prayer. In English, English is very limited. So dua shouldn't be translated as prayer. Well, so what should it? Also a supplication. Yes. So then, then it, then prayer is the right. Then the prayer is the right translation. But, it, but the salah is also referred to as the prayer. So you've got, it's you've got, worship, so so you've got, so you've got, brother. Let let's 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 not talk over one another, because then the whole conversation breaks down. I'm happy to let you in, but if you just, if, but if we just start talking over one another, then all that happens is I raise my voice. Yeah. So so let's allow one another to speak, and you, you keep interrupting. So allow me to speak. So the reality is, you have said, not me. I didn't put these words in your mouth. That dua is to supplicate Allah. That is the very definition of what prayer is. Now, that means if you can pray without 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 doing ablution. No, it isn't a false equivalent. If you can do, if you can do prayer without ablution, then that means ablution Use is unnecessary to prayer. Use dua and salah. Use dua and salah. So, so Christ, Christ said this. He said that you wash the outside, but you don't wash the inside of the bowl. There are people that obsess about the ritual, but they don't think about the, the, the intention of what it is to pray, of what it is to worship. And that's why Christians offer all of their actions to God. All of them. Having a bath, going to the loo, these are things that Same God gave Muslims. us. Same as the Muslims. Yeah? Same as the Muslims. But so, and everything, even yeah. in our finances. Okay. In our talking, in our talking, yeah. Yeah. smiles, yeah. Yeah. smiles. Yeah, it's yeah. the same. So, so, no, so now show me this in the Quran, this idea that you're offering your life to Allah as, a, as an act of worship. I'm not a scholar like yourself, Bob. I've seen but the videos. No, you can look at the well, come on, guys. You can use Google. Google. You've okay, got no, your please. phones. May I ask you a question, please? Yeah, of course. All right. So you have been talking to this gentleman, and you have uh, compared dua to salah. Okay? <laughs> and you said that they are the same. Okay, uh, no, 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 no. You said they're the no, same. No, I said but that dua is equivalent to prayer. That's what I said. Don't put words in my mouth. Okay, you said that it's equivalent to prayer. So dua. what's the definition of dua? Dua is... Uh, supplication, like you said. Right, that but is prayer, the definition salah, of prayer, so that's salah. the accurate translation no, of the word. It's not. Maybe it's a synonym to it, but doesn't make it the same. It is the same. Okay, no, it's not. It's not the same. Well, okay. people can make let's their own mind up. Let's say dua is that. Okay. It's, a it's not a false equivalence. You don't not. understand linguistics. No, 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 no. I've actually used a proper principle of linguistic translation, and because you are not familiar with linguistic you translation, okay. I used what you said dua meant. Okay, so do, do most Muslims know? And what does dua mean? <laughs> right, so you're, you're asking Allah for something. And, and is that as... Okay. But the word can be translated to many things. And what is dua? What is dua? What is dua? is asking for supplication. There you go, supplication. And, salah. and that is what prayer is, salah is not in English. Salah is not prayer. So what is salah? Like this, okay? What is salah? Okay. Salah is a form of worship where you read the Quran in a certain way, and yep. the Fatiha first, and the yep. other part of the verse of the Quran. Yep. So it's an act. It yes. has principles. It has steps. Yes. So I it's agree. Not, it's not a, it's not Allah is a Christian form of worship. I can supplicate and, 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 and ask God. And what did I say? Promise. Remember earlier in the I conversation, the remember the, earlier in the conversation, I said to you that worshiping in Islam was a particular act. I said that. It's on camera, bro. I've also said... You didn't, you didn't pay attention because I started my critique by saying that in Islam, the act of worship is a particular action, and you use the example of dua to get around that criticism. Oh, and now that you have 
now that we have established that dua is an act of prayer, now you're trying to go back on yourself on what you said earlier. Acts of worship is not limited to salah. Thank you. you realize this? Right. So, you understand this? so is does dua does dua contain prayer? Sorry. Let me let me do this another way. Sorry. Does salat contain prayer? Does salat contain prayer? Yes. This is this is the issue with the English language. You are, you are attributing one definition to one thing and yeah. another definition to another thing. Yeah. No, no, no. Let me let him finish his point, and then the, and then I'll reply, and then you can ask a question. You, you probably weren't listening when I said even the basic mannerisms. Yeah. Entering the house with your right foot. Yeah. Eating eating with your right hand. Yeah. These are all these are all forms of worship. Yeah. Dua, they, are, are dua they, is also a form of worship. That is, that is to ask, to pray. Yes, to, so in to in, be good, to be according to the yep. standard principle. Okay. To smile is an act yep. of worship. So, so in terms of in terms of this offering, because this is this is one of my criticisms of Islam. When you look at the Old Testament, they had a temple, they had a priesthood, and they had the sacrifice. You look at the time of Christ, there was the temple, the priesthood, and the sacrifice. You look at the New Covenant. We've got the temple, the priesthood, and the sacrifice. But in Islam, there is no temple, there is no priesthood. But there is more sacrifice. No, 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 not really. More. How can you offer more than your entire okay, self? Right, okay, right. Hold on one second. How can you? How? Do you offer more than yourself? I said you could ask a question, and I'm going to let you. But there, to be clear, to, to, I'm, I'm going to let you ask a question. Calm down, bro. Calm down. Okay. So, no, no, calm down, no, no, the, bro. The, so, in okay. Christianity, in Christian, no, he's going to ask a question. In Christianity, we offer our entire souls and bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. We pour ourselves out as an oblation. We die to the old self and we put on Christ as an act of sacrifice to God. Yeah, that is what we do because we are priests. Okay. Now, but, you wanted to ask a question. Yeah, yes. A question. Okay. Uh, back to the prayer and the dua, the salah and dua. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, gave this gentleman this example. Yeah. If my name is Muhammad. Yep. And his name is Muhammad. Yep. Does that mean we're the same? Um, <laughs> no. See, because he has. I mean, I don't know why you're laughing. Different. I'm agreeing no, no. with the logic. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You're so just sorry. laughing at yourself. Okay. When you agree with this logic, <laughs> why don't you agree <laughs> that salah and dua are different? Maybe linguistically they can be uh, unified involve... in one word in English. Sh yeah. but okay, so allow me to reply to this. Uh, no, if you had actually paid attention to what I... No, no, allow me to finish. Go on, go on. Because when you interrupt, all I have to do is raise my voice and then the whole conversation breaks down. The conversation works that you speak, I listen, I speak, you listen. And you did not listen because you were too busy interrupting. Go for it. Are you listening now? I am listening. At no point did I say that Dua and Salat are the same. I said that dua and prayer are the same. That is what I said, and that is what the camera will show. You, you were not paying attention. Okay, maybe now, let right. me explain why. No, okay, I haven't finished. Because I said at the very beginning of this conversation, because you weren't here, okay. to this brother, uh -huh. that the act of worship is a particular action in Islam. And he tried to argue, no, the act of worship is everything that you do. And he used the example of dua. Okay. And I said that doer is the equivalent to prayer. Okay, so that's my position. That's what I said. Now, how would you like to reply? So you're saying, if I got you right, if I understood you right, and correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You're saying that salah and dua are not the same. I am saying that salat is a, a particular form of dua. It's a particular form, form of, of dua. This is where we disagree. Okay, fair okay. enough. Okay, I believe, and any Muslim, I believe, agrees that salah is an actual act in itself yes. that has steps. Yes. Okay. But dua isn't. You yep. can be anywhere and say, Ya Allah, grant me this, grant me this. Yep. So you don't need ablution for that or yep. anything. Yep. But to carry out the act of salah, yep. you need to act. Uh, you need to do the ablution. Yep. So I heard you earlier. I came in while you were talking about the ablution part. So yep. you're saying that uh, if they are the same and it's another form of prayer, you don't need to, to do ablution for salah. Did you say that I, I am saying. I am saying that clearly to supplicate Allah, you don't need to. You don't need to do ablution. Supplicate, do dua. This is what you to mean. supplicate. To do dua. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to do ablution. I agree with you. Great. But so you so here's the, here's what here's Jesus's here's Christ's words to you. So can here, I just here, here, one, one, one second? You, here's, no, let me reply to him. Let me reply to him. Here's Christ's words to you, okay. that you think that you will be heard by your many vain repetitions, that you think that God is pleased by. The, 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 the outward expression of your prayers. 
God is not pleased with any of these things. None of these things are important to him. Mm -hmm. What is important to him is a humble and contrite heart. Is a, is a sacrifice of the inner self. Are not necessary to please God. Are we agreed? We I think a... you are referring to Salat. So it's I'm talking, saying... now talking about Salat. We've moved on from Dua. We're now talking about Salat. Are we agreed? Are we agreed? According to your belief of Christianity. Are we agreed that the outward performance of actions is not necessary to please God? Uh, if you're referring to Salah. Yes, in Salah. Uh, okay. I'm speaking specifically Here, of Salah. It can, you, can, uh, you can be dynamic in thinking yes. that when you're praying in Salah, you may not, in your heart, be focused on the act itself. You're just doing the actions. Yes. So, yes, it's irrelevant if your heart is not clear while you're praying. Great. Yes. Yes, great. So we are, we are agreed. Great. Yes. So, if we are agreed then, that the outward forms are less important than the inward actions, then so long as a Christian is truly offering their soul and body to the living God, that they are doing it with the full remembrance of God, the full desire to give themselves to God, mm -hmm. their prayer is acceptable. That's the Christian, from a Christian yes, point of view. Yes, that's a Christian view. Even, even Christian. if you are humble, yep. if you don't carry out the action, yep. you are still at fault. Right, brilliant. So what you're according saying is, Islam. great, and according yes, to Christian, so, yeah, I, I knew that you would say that. That's fine. We're, we're, we're all in agreement what Islam teaches. So what you're saying is that Allah will reject a true sincere salat if it's done wrongly, with the wrong actions. Not the wrong actions, the wrong intent. Because I can be a corrupt politician. And but he just said exactly the opposite. He just said exactly the opposite. Can Literally, just two minutes ago. What you said, I said, even if you have good intention, if you're not carrying out the prayers, the form, the form, the form. You, the form, yeah. the form, you yeah. said the form. You were talking yeah. about the actions. Yeah. As in, no, I was talking about the doing the salah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So that's the form like because the salah is the form. No, 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 no. no. You just said explain. salah listen, is the form. Let him explain listen, himself. Listen. You have your hands here, and if you have your hands here. Yeah. There's no difference. Okay. I'm saying if you don't do it, if your head doesn't touch the floor. If he doesn't do it at all, if you don't do the saying. salah. If your head doesn't touch the floor, if, but you, you stand if, with a sincere heart and pray to Allah, you, will he accept your salah? Yes, if well, you then, okay, okay. This is supplication. Listen, it's listen. Not salah. So it's not salah. Listen. Because it's steps. So he won't listen, accept your salah. Listen, listen. Steps. And so do you have to do okay. the salah? Wait, wait, yes, wait, I have wait. to do the salah. So is it a sin not to do it? Yes. Of course it's not. It so is. will Allah punish you for not doing no, it? Listen, listen. So therefore he won't accept your salah Bob, if you do it Bob, just standing. Bob, listen, Bob, listen. You know what's no, the problem? Bob, listen, you guys are so no, eager no, to win any point, you'll even go back on what you said two minutes so earlier. If you go to university and you don't go to class, if you don't go to lectures, yeah. how, will you, how will you pass? Right. Listen, so, oh yeah, I just want to make it clear. If you are somebody who doesn't know how to pray, yeah. you won't be at fault for not doing the actions correctly. Yeah. If you, know, if you are somebody who knows how to pray, and you just you miss out steps on purpose, then you're not doing the salah. Yeah, on purpose. On yeah. purpose. If you have the knowledge of how to pray and you don't pray, yeah, then you are at sin. Is the Shia form of salah acceptable? Well, there's a scholarly disagreement. So, in other words, to some Muslims, no, and to some Muslims, yes. Well, that's inter, honestly, that's in, in, inter, inter Islam debate. Inter -Islam yeah, but you're talking to someone who's aware of it, so there's no point trying to no, obscure it's, it's, it because I'm already Christian, aware. You may be aware, but I'm not. Right. So, so here's the problem, right? In some schools of Islam, you can do salat between the morning and the noon prayer. You can? You can do salat between the morning and the noon prayer. Which in some salat, salat we've Which already salat? talked about. Or fajr or sabah. The morning to the noon prayer. Sunrise. The so morning, about, the, sunrise, know, when, uh, the sunrise, the sunrise to moon. You in some madam. Directly when the sun is directly ahead. Yeah. You're yeah. talking to the wrong person here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, t I'm talking to yeah, you with what I know. That's fine. That's yeah. fine. And I appreciate that and I respect it. And I f I'm glad we're, that we're, we're all we're having a calm in, conversation. We're going into the intricacies of prayer. But the initial point is, you said that Christians, just because they sacrifice their body. I'm saying Muslims as in general, the common people, sacrifice more no, they don't. for the sake of God no, than they Christians don't. do. No, they don't. Because how do you know? That's just, you that's just, a, that's, do, that's do such a subjective, that's a completely, oh. utterly subjective oh. analysis. There's no, you evidence, have, you have there's no, no evidence to support what you're doing. What? No, sorry? No, what? No, sorry? Do you have restrictions? Yes, of course we do. Which, which restrictions? We should, we should not enter into sin. Which restrictions? Which dietary restrictions? So, so you think that that is sacrifice, do you? Of course it's sacrifice. So, brother, let, let's be clear, right? Of course it's sacrifice. How much do you give in zakat? Well, I... I don't ask your question. No, hold on. I'm just going to bust this ass, right? Because yeah. you just, right. your ass just cash. You literally, your, you what, your mouth just cashed a check that your ass can't cash. You have made a completely subjective 
claim that is utter rubbish. Which is, and I'm going to prove to you which is, it's observable. Which is, right, great. Let me. So, do you want to actually listen? No, I'm, no, 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 I'm going, no, 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 no. I'm not moving on from this point. No, I'm not going. I'm not going to move on from this point. I am going to make guys, guys. You have gone, guys. I, I will interrupt you if you interrupt me. And when I interrupt you, you'll all become complaining that I'm interrupting you. Let me repeat. Let me repeat. No, no, no. Repeat. Stop interrupting. Can I repeat? You're, you have, no, no, hold on one second. No, hold on one second. I heard what you said. What did he say? I am what going did he say? to say. Okay. Guys, okay, at this point, this is where I have to raise my voice. Because notice that the conversation has broken down. Right, are you going to let me speak then? That means you have to stop interrupting. This is why I have to raise my voice, because you can't control yourself. Right, thank you. Are you done? We are done? Right. You have made a claim that is completely subject. Right. One second. There again, going and interrupting. How many seconds was it? Ten seconds before he interrupted again? And this is why I have to raise my voice. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Right. You're not going to talk then, are you? Right. Good. Shall we do this time? Right. So don't interrupt. Now, you made a claim that is completely subjective. And earlier in this conversation, before the camera came, he was trying to criticize Christianity about subjectivity. And he has just made the claim that there is more sacrifice in Islam than in Christianity. There is no objective way that you can prove such a claim. That is, no, not yet. That is a totally subjective claim. But, but, ladies and gentlemen, I will refute it with a few examples. Okay. Using just the example of the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army numbers 250,000 uniformed officers. And they do more social good work in terms of the productive welfare and charitable actions that they do in this country than four million Muslims. And that is before I add on all the other Christians. Muslims give 2.5% of their income to charitable good causes. The average Christian gives between 5 and 10% of their income. I give 5% of my income. That's more than him. That's more than him. That's more than him. Five and ten percent. Five and ten percent. So Christians give more money than Muslims. Oh, notice now they're upset. When Christians fast during Lent, we actually reduce the calories we eat. When Muslims eat during Ramadan, they increase the calories that they eat. The actual number amount of food that Muslims buy during Ramadan goes up, not down. Muslims only fast for 30 days during Ramadan. Christians fast on Wednesdays and Fridays, and they also fast at Advent and Lent for 40 days. So Christians fast for over 100 days. You're objectively making a subjective claim that can't be proven, it's totally speculative, and I have plenty of evidence to demonstrate you're wrong. Now, you wanted to speak. So you're saying that objectively, this gentleman cannot prove that Islam gives more? Correct. Okay, so how, do you know that Muslims buy food in excess to feed the poor during Ramadan? No. Yes, they do. They I, feed but, themselves. No, 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 no. Oh, we're family, we're family. We feed themselves. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm a Muslim. I lived in Arabic countries. I've lived in Egypt, yep. I've lived in Jordan, I've lived in Libya, yep. I've lived in Malaysia, I've lived here. Muslims give more during Ramadan. So it's not, listen, we're not comparing quantity, okay? Let's not compare quantity. Oh, he did. Okay, he did. I didn't. Fair so enough, that's Muslims fine. Give, give You're wrong. About quality. Oh, wrong? <laughs> God gave Because God, Salvation God, Army and you disprove our God's God demand to his creations, whether, any, uh, whether it be any religion, yep. is to give is to share with others. Yeah. That's the essence of religion. Yeah. This is what we believe. It's not about the quantity. Okay, because cultural differences in economies, the strength of economy control what how much people can give. Like people in Somalia, Muslims in Somalia or Christians in Somalia 
cannot give the same as Christians here. But it is, but it is about not, quantity, it's isn't it? It's not about quantity. Uh, so we how much economy. does your zakat have to be? Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I told you, I'm not a scholar from the beginning. 2.5%. 2.5%. Is that right? What's the, what's the impetus to give charity in Christianity? Great question. Great question. No, no, I didn't, well, I didn't yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah. Let him finish his point okay. and I'll answer that. So it's what I'm trying to say is that quantity is not the measure. It can be that you can compare them. This is, this is more, this is less. Okay, you, you can. But quality is the essence. The sense of sharing is, is the goal of sharing in a religious way. This is why there is zakah, this is why there is sadaqah, there is, this, is, this is why these things are there. So this, okay. so this is what I'm trying to say. Can I reply and to also that? in Eid, the Adha Eid, when, they, uh, when we sacrifice, if you're saying sacrifice, we're not just giving our bodies, we're giving, we, we're giving animals to feed the poor. We're sacrificing more. Okay, okay. so allow, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me to reply to that. Allow me to reply to that. I didn't finish. Uh, okay, okay, go on. So, this Eid, uh, when but, we do that, I mean, hold on, Eid, you're protesting that, that I should family. let you finish, but you've been interrupting no, me continuously. I'm just, out, I'm just pointing out, I'm just pointing out, did I not say he would complain if I interrupted him? Excuse me. Just saying. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, bro, that when you were interrupting me, you thought it was I fine. I wasn't. I told you to repeat what he said. That's right. all. No, you interrupted okay. me continuously. Uh, if I, if I interrupted you, I apologize. Accept okay. it. Continue. So, what I'm trying to say is that I heard what you said. When Adha, when there is Eid Adha, we have to sacrifice the sheep. We give five more sheep to the poor people. Okay. This is just my family. Yep. Okay. Great. So, if it's quantity, if it's based on quantity, it's based on the person's ability to give. Are you done? That's all. Can I reply to that? So before I answer your question, let me just reply to him. Because the brother says that it's not about quantity. But actually in Islam, a particular amount is expected in zakat. 2.5%. 2.5%. So it is about quantity. You can't drop below the minimum. You can't drop below the minimum. So it is about quantity. Now notice he's interrupting. It's amazing, isn't it? It is absolutely amazing that when I interrupt them, they demand that I listen. But when I speak, they interrupt continuously. It must be Muhammad has failed to teach you manners. Now, let's go on. He's interrupting again. There we go. So in terms of, in terms of quantity, actually in Islam, it is about quantity, the minimum. Now, well, no, there you go, he's interrupting. Now, in Christianity, Christ tells a story. He was there at the temple. He wasn't, it's not a story actually, he's using a visible example. He was there at the temple and all the Pharisees and the leaders of the community were making a being a, a, a show and dance. A show and dance about giving their charitable alms. And then he saw an old widow put in a penny. And he said to his apostles, note the widow, note the old lady, because out of her poverty, she has given all that she had, whereas the rich have only given out of their wealth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the difference, the reason, to answer your question, the reason why Christians give so much more than Muslims <laughs> is because we are offering our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. There are some, there's a whole, there's a whole school of thought in Christians, in Christianity. You can see it in a book called Rich Christians in an Age of Hunger. And it says that those who are rich enough should live on 10% and give away 90%. We Christians are encouraged to give all that we can. All, yeah. That we give all that we can. All you can. All the, all the Christians are called, I'm going to be, actually I'll do a talk soon about the seduction of riches and you'll see what Jesus said about it. Because Christianity teaches that you only need a modest life. You don't need a luxurious we life. Agree, we agree. We agree. Well, you, someone needs to tell your caliphs and your princes culture, here across culture, the Middle East. Culture. Someone needs to tell Queen Elizabeth. Culture. I agree. Yeah. It's culture. Yeah, it's culture. Yeah. <laughs> so we give, we're encouraged to give all that we can and live a modest life. That is the Christian way. Okay. The prophet lived in a, uh, in a modest uh, style. Yeah, of but just go, going back to your point, yeah, then you can go yeah. ahead. Okay? If you want to reply, you can. Yeah. Although I don't find it necessary. But it's your choice. What I'm saying is that when I said that quantity doesn't matter, Okay, I didn't mean that I'm uh, that uh, the 2.5 percent yep. is not necessary. Yep. But if giving more or less is uh, necessary, if it's 2.5 percent uh, out of 100,000, it's whatever it is that quantity. If it's yep. out of a million, it's whatever it is that quantity. Don't you think that's unjust? So, it's not unjust. It's, it's the same it's thing. It's not unjust for someone who has 100 million. Oh wait, you want me to? But you were interrupting me. I'm just showing. I'm just okay. showing okay. how Thank you, for you have a double standard. Mistake. Thank you for showing me my mistake. I respect that. <laughs> Okay, what I'm saying is that when you give, 
The act itself is what counts. Yes. If it's, in, if it's 2.5% in the Quran, it says you have to give 2.5%. Can it be less? Then the, no, it cannot be less. That's the problem. But no, no what I'm saying is not the problem. It can be less. More, well, how yes. much is 2.5%? Well, Christian, it can, be, well, Christian it can be one penny and that's the charity done for the And if they're dirt poor, that's totally and fine. You know, you know how can a poor person you know, give 2.5%? Even a million in it. Even a million in it. How can a, how can a poor person give 2.5%? Well, they, they don't have to give 2.5%. Yeah, well, they're well, the poor. Religion. They get the money. Okay, so, 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 wait, so I want to be clear because this is an interesting point. He's made an interesting point. You're saying that in Islam, the poor, don't have the to poor Muslims they don't, don't, don't only have to keep four pillars, not five. They don't do hajj either. If they don't have the money to do hajj, they don't do hajj. Great, okay. So Islam can be reduced to three pillars. No, it's, it's so, well, depending on the circumstances that you're in, yep. if you are physically unable to do hajj, then it's not obligatory. Under. Right, so we can rightly say that Islam Islam can be reduced to just no, three obligatory no, pillars. No, 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 no. So, 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 yeah, so a poor, poor man person, must go on hajj. No, if you're a poor person, then yes. But if you can, there are exceptions. Right. So, so that's my point, bro. What you're really saying, if you're saying that there are exceptions to two of the pillars, remember these are your words. I didn't put them there. Then that means that Islam can be reduced to three obligatory I'll pillars. Tell you why. I'll tell you why it cannot be. I'll tell you why it cannot be. Would it be okay. just? I'll tell you why it cannot be. If you don't have the financial ability to do something, yes, and then. God tells you no, you have to do it. That means that means you either have to steal and yep. you commit a sin, so you can actually go do it. So Islam can be reduced to three pillars. No, it cannot. Because if it's reduced to three pillars, that means the people with financial ability to do it, they will not choose they will choose not to do it. So so uh, wow. first so it's logical. So 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 I mean cannot, logic. Okay. No 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 no. I, I, I agree with the justice of your argument. Yes. To be clear, okay. I want to be clear. I agree with the justice of your argument. Totally. Okay. Yeah? Then we are agree but here's but here's my but, but, but the, 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 no no I'm a, but what the, the implication of what you're saying is that Islam can actually be reduced to just three obligatory pillars? This is where we disagree again. We're going back into so the same sort. You, you can't have it both ways. Either the poor. No, hold on one second. Now notice again. You're interrupting me when I'm speaking. You're interrupting me when I'm speaking. But when I interrupt you, you ask that I listen. So the reality is, if you're saying that the poor don't have to do Hajj and the poor don't have to give 2.5% of their income, mm -hmm. then that means for the poor yes. that Islam is reduced to three pillars, not five. In that current state that right. they're in, yes. So, the next what question... Is, what's the thing? We are going, we're going they into a circus. There are they do disagree. circumstances, like if you, if you are in university yeah. and you have had an accident or an emergency... Can there be extenuating <laughs> circumstances to not praying? No, no, they're not. Unless you are yeah, even if you are debilitated, if you are debilitated, you don't, you can't, you don't have to carry the actual physical act, but you yep. can pray while you're sleeping. Yeah. I did it when I had, when I broke my leg. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't pray. Yeah. So I had to pray while yeah. sitting down. So you can do salat yes. without for, doing for, the actions. Wait, for for women, for without doing the actions. Extension. But you can do it yeah, when you are physically pray. able. You can do it when you are physically yeah, able. A woman who does, who's menstruating, she doesn't. And then comparing right. apples and oranges. And so, so here's. Yes. No, I'm really. I am. You're right. I am comparing apples and oranges. Oranges, because the Christian faith makes so much more sense when I listen to you guys. Because, and let me explain why. Now, please, please know, please know, you will want me to listen to you. So now, listen to me, because the Christian faith says that where the Spirit is, there is freedom. That means that we Christians must worship God in spirit and in truth. Whether you're on your period or not does not matter. Whether you're rich or you're poor does not matter. Something that is truly universal has to be universal to all people at all times in all places. The Christian faith is universal. It applies to all people, all times, in all places. You're saying that Islam applies to some people some of the time in some circumstances but not others. That's what you're saying. Now, that's a really big difference between our two religions. Because in our faith, you, we give a whole life and body to God. In complete sacrifice. And that means that God doesn't look whether you're menstruating and say your your prayers are not acceptable to me. He doesn't say to you, he doesn't say to you, because you haven't done the right body motions, your prayers are not acceptable to me. If anything, he says to you, be warned that you don't concentrate on the outward, but you look on the inward, you make sure that the inner spirituality is right. And this is the, 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 the great waking difference, the chasm between your religion and mine. Your religion reduces Allah to a fetishist. Someone who obsesses about the form and the ritual. That is a fetishist. That is the definition of a fetishist. 
Our God is not a fetishist. Wow. He wants a contrite and humble heart. That's yeah, what he done. wants. Well, yeah, go on. One thing you've said right now is that uh, Christianity uh, have uh, Christians have to give five to ten percent. Have to. No, 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 no. No, yes. I didn't say that. Okay, can you ta- can you correct me? What did you say exactly about the money that you have to give? Yeah. How much? Alexa. So, so, so Hi. let me. So, Hi. yeah, sister. Alexa. We got. So what I said was, and this is what I mean about listening, listening. interrupting less and listening more. Listening. What I said was, is that on average, studies show that Christians give between five and ten percent of their income. Why would they do now, this? one second. It says in Scripture that God loves a cheerful giver, and that we should give freely. We received freely, and we should give freely. There is no obligation in the Christian faith so you to can give. give zero. You listen, listen. Interrupting again. If you'd listen, you'd learn more. There is no obligation in Christianity to give. Christians give freely and cheerfully and sacrificially because our example is Jesus. And that is why we give 5 and 10%. Not because we're obliged to, but because we want to. Because the teaching of Jesus has changed our hearts. We're doing it freely. There's no sin in giving less. When I chose to become a Muslim, okay? I've always, I was born a Muslim, but when I got to 19 years old, I chose to be a Muslim. Truly, this is like from a personal experience, okay? Yeah. I chose to be a Muslim. So I freely chose to follow Islam. And when I followed it, I started following the teachings which say give. So I am encouraged by God, by Allah, to give. So where's the difference here? I freely chose to follow. Right, one second. Here's the difference. Tell me. Zakat is not charity. Zakat is a tax. It's a redistributive tax, it isn't charity. So you can't count that as charity. Okay, Muslims, yes. Who should it be yeah. given to? Who should it be given to? Zakat. According to it's Islam. given to poor Muslims first. So how is that not charity? It's and you said it yourself. No, I like no, no. This, this, this guy is honest no. here. He was honest. I respect that. Because he said Muslims first, this means they can give to others, but non, non-Muslims as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but the, unfortunately, they don't do that in Pakistan, where during the floods in Pakistan, Christians were sent away yeah. by Muslim it's charitable organizations. That's what happened in Pakistan. In the floods that happened years back. It's a failure of Islamic teaching. When Christians give charity, they give liberally to everybody. Muslim, Christian, but Jew. There is no obligation, and that is the beauty of the Christian faith. That is no, no. Hold on one second. So one second. Let, let, let's 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 let, let's give. Let's let's give. Let's 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 deal with this. And please note how you interrupted again. So firstly, zakat is not charity. It is a redistributive tax. That's not charity. That's a tax. Britain has redistributive taxes, and we have higher redistributive taxes than you do. We pay tax upwards of 20%, so even a secular uh, country like Britain has better redistributive taxes than Islam teachers. Now, secondly, secondly, you, you keep going on, there's no obligation to give, there's no obligation to give. Like that's some kind of criticism of my faith. But the point of the matter is, now notice you're interrupting, notice you're interrupting, but you'll complain because I'm going to interrupt you now and just teach you again. I'm going to teach you again the lesson about manners. So they're interrupting again. So that is the beauty of my faith. Imagine this, a religion that says you have no obligation to give, but inspires people to give anyway. And it doesn't just inspire people to give, it inspires people to give more than Islam obliges them at the minimum. That is the beauty of the Christian faith, that it inspires people to sacrifice. Now you said about you can give zero. Absolutely, a poor person does not need to give financially. But a poor person, I've already told you, I give 5%. No, but can you give zero? If I, 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 if I chose to, but yes, as okay. a Christian, All right, well, well, one second, because here's the, here's the thing, right? Because now you've asked a, a supplementary question. Yes. I've got to now talk a little bit more to answer that supplementary question. That question. So that means you now need to listen to the answer. So you're right, I can give less, it isn't a sin. But does that mean that I should not give in other ways? No, I can give of my time. I can give of other kinds of resources, like my clothes to charity shops, or my food to someone who doesn't have food. Now, also, because of the concept of Christian discipleship, would my father of confession, my discipler, turn round to me and say, 
you've got a job, you're earning a decent wage. Would he turn around to me and say, I don't think you should be giving anything financially? He wouldn't do that. He would encourage me to give. Because it's an ethos within the Christian faith to give freely and cheerfully because we received freely. So I know you think you're making a criticism of Christianity, but you're really not. So you said that because God in Christianity uh, didn't uh, force or command the Christians to pay the equivalent of zakat, it's more inspirational, right? Blatantly. Okay. So in Islam, God assured that the followers of the religion, the proper followers of religion who apply it, do that. Yeah. So it creates a fairer financial uh, support for the poor. But when it's ob not non-obligatory, you know, like you, a million people can do it. 60 million, 70 million don't have to. And they don't feel obliged to do so. Okay. But in Islam, they give. Yep. They, are, they have to give yep. to be a proper follower of Islam. Yep. They have to do so. Yep. So God here as being an all wise, because in all religions we believe that God is all wise. Okay. Whether it's a Christian, yep. God or whatever. So let, let, let me reply to this. Yeah, go on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, are you complaining that I'm interrupting? I understand. I understand. Are, have you learned yet the, the, the double standard you keep appealing to? Again and again. Yeah, again and again. You're complaining that I'm interrupting you, but then you want me to just be quiet when you're talking. Be the, be the better person. Yes. Be the, be the better person. Be the better person. Go on. Right. So, in Islam, God made sure that the financial support to the poor is obligatory. Uh -huh. So, But in Christianity, it isn't. So many people may choose not to. Some people may choose to. And you're gonna, now you're going to go back to your old point by saying that is, uh, Christians give uh, more, 5 10%. But how many people do that? How many people do that? Many, 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 many Christians even do that. Muslims, I can say that we do that. And how many Muslims do don't do their zakat? We do it in command. How many Muslims don't do their zakat? How many? How many? Yeah. Well, uh, how many? Well, let's let uh, we'll come on to that. We'll uh, come I didn't on to that. This is a rhetorical yeah. question. Okay. So many, many people give bail and many don't oblig by obligation, and many do it just out of charity. It's not that, if that's, it's an obligation, it's not a charity. It, it gives you both both sides. But yours is obligatory. Yeah, some people do it, some people don't, it doesn't matter. But in Islam, we have to guarantee a respectable uh, life to our community, brothers and sisters. This is the beauty. Okay, of so now let me reply to that. Because the, the brother has tried to make this argument that, you know, Islam creates this beautifully just society. Well, let's look at the Islamic world and let's look at the world that's been influenced by Christianity. Which one has demonstrably taken care of its poor? The Islamic world hasn't. Go across the Middle East, go to Pakistan, go to Afghanistan. The zakat system has failed completely to address the needs of the poor. Now, we can assume that that's one of two reasons. Either lots of Muslims aren't giving their zakat, so it's not helping the poor, or lots of Muslims are giving their zakat and it's not enough to help the poor. So either way, Islam has failed. By contrast, in the 1940s, 1940s, it was the Christian church that advocated for the establishment of the welfare state. That lifted millions of people out of poverty. It has been Christians that have advocated for the jubilee cancellation of debt for the third world. That was a Christian enterprise. That has eased the burden on the poorest in society. The world, the, the world that has been influenced by Christianity is the, is the one that has lifted the most people out of poverty. Islam has dominated Saudi Arabia for 1400 years and there are still people in Saudi Arabia who are dirt poor. In England, where Christianity has dominated for a thousand years, we have relative poverty, not objective poverty like in a third world country. We have relative poverty, i.e. there are people that are on the breadline who are struggling, but our infrastructure and our resources provides a substantial safety net 
that doesn't exist in Islam. Now, please note, they've replaced one kind of rudeness for another. They've not even been listening to what I've been saying. They've been listening to one another. They demand manners, but they show no manners. Okay, I just want to finish with this. You said that Christianity inspires to give charity and Islam somehow doesn't. I didn't but, say that. But you said you I didn't say that. You're using a reductionist I argument. I didn't say that. What I actually okay. said. Okay, so now you're interrupting what? me. Oh, oh, oh look, he's, up, he's, oh. he's upset about that. Okay, so I'm just doing what you do. <laughs> Who did it first, bro? Okay, okay listen. Just it's let amazing, let me, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, he wants me to listen to him let, finish. Okay. Do you okay. see that double standard? You are trying to use a reductionist argument. The thing is, bro, but, okay, Zakat so does the same thing. isn't a charity. <laughs> do, do you see how he's upset by this? He was anyway, doing it anyway, a minute ago and anyway, it's fine, but anyway, now I'm talking to you and not listening to him. Anyway, they demand that I listen. Anyway, Zakat is not a charity, it's a tax. And he hasn't caught on to that. I never said Muslims don't give to charity. What I said was that Zakat isn't a charity. They don't listen to what you say. Okay, we're done. We're one for one now. We're done. We're done. Oh, wait, were you upset by that? We're one, one for but one. It was now. okay when we're, you did it. We're one Go for one. No, okay. Go on. <laughs> you you, we'll you get, try. We'll okay, okay I'm just gonna say one, and I'm gonna go. It's been nice talking to you. Bob, it's been nice talking to you likewise. as well. I just want to say that you've said that you've tried to use a reductionist argument by saying Christianity inspires to give freely, but Islam places a 2.5 percent minimum. But in fact, when you look at the hadiths, it says the three things that will go with you in the grave are is the sadaqah that you give, which is the optional charity. So in that sense, people are inspired to give more because it will it will go on with them. Secondly, you mentioned that Christians have been helping the poor for the last 2,000 years. Or we have. If you look at the Middle Ages and you look at the Islamic Golden Era, you'll see the vast differences in the society. Because you stole and looted others' you, wealth. Okay, you, and, and Christianity never did that in the empires, guys. Col colonialism did not happen. It is an enlightened, Christ modernist, oh, okay. secular movement. Okay, so you yeah, use like Afghanistan, numbers, right? Pakistan, all of these countries, but Afghanistan has been littered and looted by for the last 20 years and he's used Afghanistan to say oh look how the poor are in Afghanistan while we educated women the Taliban never did while, while, while completely reducing any context any, are you happy the Taliban won well it's, it's it's separate red herring red herring is it yeah it's red herring yeah so, oh wait wait wait! You so, want, you're so, protesting now. So you it, can't protest. So bro. on on the one hand you have the Middle Ages where the peasants were treated like dirt poor, and now he's trying to use that as an example to say, oh look how far Christianity has come. England, and we abolished slavery while the Muslims were okay, practicing it. Yeah, still. and you still and you started the slavery. In 1984. Yeah, you yeah. started the slavery. No, you we abused, didn't. You, you slavery it. predated Christianity. Yeah, Christianity. show me racial. The racial pharaohs slavery practiced slavery. 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 It's in your Quran, bro. Oh, you okay. Anyway, so I just want to say that Christianity they don't set a minimum, so people can give zero and they can live guilt-free. If they're poor. If, well, even if they're rich, because there's no compulsion in Christianity. In Islam, there's a compulsion. Giving freely, receiving freely, giving there's no cheerfully. No compulsion. You said yourself there's no compulsion. You're right. There's anyway. no religious compulsion. Thank you, Bob. Look, bro, that was a really. It was really. Do you want to hold that? Next time I'm done, I want to talk to you about. Oh, that May, I Look, this was a really lovely conversation, yeah. and despite the, despite the, the, the sort of jostling around manners, right? I, you know, that, that's just a bit of fun for me. But because it was such a nice conversation, yeah. I would like to give you a gift. Right. A proper gift. I appreciated your answer about um, why Christians ask for repentance, but I still have to get back to you about that, when you said it's a form of therapy for the brain. It's a changing of the mind, yeah, yeah that's what repentance is. Cognitive behavioural therapy, that's what... We call, we call the, the, the idea of, it's, it's this idea of uh, the, this perpetual reprogramming of the mind. Yeah, behavioural therapy, yeah. essentially. That is what repentance okay. is, yeah. it's about the changing of the mind. Next time we'll have a discussion on how... I mean, I'm happy to have it now if you want. Um, a bit worn out. <laughs> Alright, I want to give you a gift. Look, I don't give out little silly pamphlets that are bought for 12 pence and are written by 12 year olds like have the good grace and charity to give people proper books as a gift look at that man it is about grace which is what we've been talking about we christians believe that we've received grace freely and we want to give grace freely this is what we're talking about grace is a gift from god and we want to and that is why we give that, this is why, so this is for you. I appreciate it. Nice speaking to you, nice speaking to you as well. You. Can I give you a gift as well? It was nice talking yeah, 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 yeah. Let me give you a gift. Let me give you a gift. Yeah, because, you know, we Christians give. <laughs> you can choose to reply or not, okay? Go on. The gentleman talked about uh, yourself saying that for the past 2,000 years, 
uh, Christianity has been giving the world. Yes. And the gentleman uh, briefly talked about colonialism. Yep. How do you think it affected it? Affected uh, those colonized countries, and how it affected their economies and the power of their currency, which uh, either hinders or gives them the ability to give more. Okay, so that's let me, a really let, good let, question. Firstly, let me give you a, let me give you a gift. So that's for our previous conversation, which was very nice. I'll give you one as well. Um, but, but let me just reply to this. The first thing that we've got to recognize is that the colonial period is connected to the Enlightenment, not Christianity. By the time that the colonial period kicked off, um, what you have, with the exception of the Spanish and Portuguese, I'll give you that. But with the exception of the Spanish and the Portuguese, you'd already had the sort of replacement of Christianity with the Enlightenment in Western Europe. Now, one second, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. But I think it's cheap for Muslims to talk about colonialism. Because what about Islamic colonialism? And what about Arabization? Egypt had a language before Islam came along, it was Coptic. Now they speak Arabic. Lots of Muslims in Egypt don't even know that they're African, they're Nubians. They think that they're Arab. In Pakistan, they have their own language, but you've got Arabization. In Afghanistan, Arabization. Islam brought the slave trade wherever it went. Muslims can't lecture Europeans about colonialism because Islam is all about colonialism and has been for 1400 years. It's also a historical fact. That's what you say. It's a historical fact. So, sorry, was, that, was Syria Christian or Muslim when the Muslims invaded? I'm telling you. Well, I am. I'm, I'm talking to you. I am a historian. So Speak let me to tell you. No, so no. let me. No, Just you're speaking to a historian. Correct me. Correct me. I am correcting you. Correct. Syria was Christian when Muslims Correct. invaded. Correct. Was Correct. Egypt Muslims Christian? He said. He was said. Was Philippines. was Philippines. was was, was, Philippines. was, Philippines. was, 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 was no, it wasn't. No, it was animist. Country. It was animist. You don't know your Egypt. So Muslims can't lecture about colonialism because Islam has practiced colonialism from the time of Muhammad. The gentleman you said. The gentleman said that he's going to give me that the, Sp uh, the Spanish and the Portuguese era was... Uh, I accept the, right. the, that, and that, that... what did you say? Yep. You said it was replaced the by... Col the, the Enlightenment period is... No, in the Enlightenment it period... It yes. right. you, you don't know the terms you're using, bro. The, after after uh, la, 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 the Islamic period of the... So you say Muslims ended. never invaded other people's oh, lands? Let me finish and you're going to get the idea. Never. No. Let me get the idea. After the prophet's time... After the prophet's... You don't know history, sir. You don't know history. After, after the prophet's time... Okay, after the prophet died, alayhi salatu wasalam, any person that comes after that is applying their own personal agenda. Does that include the rightly guided caliphs? They're applying their own understanding of the religion. Does that include the rightly guided caliphs? This is what I'm saying. Does that include the rightly guided caliphs? No. Right. So they invaded other people's lands. The Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire. Why is that wrong, by the way? I have a question. No. There we go. Why is that wrong? Is colonialism wrong? Colonialism? Yes. In the age of empire, no. So, so, there's, so the, you've got no criticism of colo the colonial period? No. You've got that in record. Wait, wait, wait. Got I that have in a record. criticism. Wait, hold on, hold on. Before you 